All right, welcome back to Turbo Garage. So today I'm gonna to be doing some maintenance on my little 1992 Subaru Sambar I call Mighty Mo. And I need to do an oil change in this thing. Uh, I haven't done one since I did the uh, engine rebuild. I probably should have done one not long after, but it's been 5,000 kilometers since my last, or since I rebuilt it, so it's due for an oil change now. I need to rotate the tires, and I need to change the points in the distributor because I've been getting for quite some time now, actually, a bit of a misfire in the engine when it's cold and I, I think it might be the point so I've got a set of new points I'm going to put those in and give it a general going over checking coolant level uh, inspecting make sure I haven't got any oil leaking in like I was before I think I am good there and uh, check the transmission oil level stuff like that so anyway let's just get into it and uh, get some maintenance done all right so to jack these things up the easiest thing to do Put it on jack stands is, is the big crossbar that goes across the back that acts as the uh, the motor mount. Put your jack on there. You can lift the whole back of the truck up. Put your jack stands on there, and that's the easiest way to lift the thing up off the ground. So to get the oil, obviously, is a 14 millimeter wrench. Just take your nut off there and drain your oil. I will say, this thing did not need one drop of oil over 5,000 kilometers since I rebuilt the engine, not a drop. All right, with that drained out, uh, let's have a quick look. It's actually, you know what? That oil is not super dirty, considering this oil was like super, super black and I had to add oil all the time uh, prior to the rebuild. So with 5,200 kilometers on it, it's actually, that's pretty clean oil. Next thing is the oil filter. Let's crack this loose, let the oil come out, there we go. Now the oil filter, in case you're wondering, it's just a Subaru Justy. If you can find on Rock Auto or any of your local uh, suppliers, uh, auto parts store, it's just find one for an old Subaru Justy. Pick a 1990, that's your filter. So for oil, it holds about three liters of oil, roughly. I'm just using some Quaker State. Uh, I use 10W30, seems to work fine for me. One thing is when you're filling, uh, do it kind of slow because it will, it'll overflow a bit. It, because of the angle of the valve cover and everything, you got to kind of go slow. Otherwise, you have a bit of a mess. So we'll top this up with oil and start it up and make sure she's right full. All right, I lowered the truck back down to get it level. Ran it for a little bit. Let it sit for a minute or so. Now I'll just check the oil should be about right yeah there you go right on the money so there you go right about three liters is what it held so that's good uh, next thing we'll do I think is the points in the distributor all right so to get the distributor out pretty easy on these I'll pull my coil out undo the two clips for my distributor cap get those off the distributor there Pull my vacuum hose off and get that off. Push it with a wrench. There we go. Uh, disconnect my wire for the distributor. There we go. And then it's a matter of two 10 millimeter bolts. Crack them loose. Now, you notice I'm not putting this to top dead center or anything like that because you don't really need to worry about that. The, the rotor, when you put the distributor back in, it can only go one way. So, get these screws out here and pull the distributor out. I might get a bit of oil here. Let's change the plans. I feel like a bit of a dumb dumb, but I forgot. This doesn't actually have points in it. It's an inductive pickup. So all I've done is just, uh, I sprayed some brake clean in here, cleaned it up, because this distributor, unfortunately, it does have a bit of an internal oil leak on the shaft, which is not serviceable. You can't, I mean, you can get the O-ring for the outside, but that's not where this thing leaks. It actually leaks on the shaft. It comes through and it will slowly leak into the, into the distributor, which is a bit of a pain. I haven't, uh, I've got a couple of spare distributors. I should open one up and see if I can figure out a way to do that, but I haven't gotten to doing that. Anyway, we're just gonna put this back in, but one thing I'll get to show you guys is how to set the ignition timing. All right, because I had the distributor out, which I didn't need to, 
uh, I need to reset the timing. So you need a timing light for that. And what you do is you'll set your little uh, probe on the number one spark plug. And then because the battery is too far away for these to reach, what I do is I just put it on the, the positive side of the starter and then just find a ground somewhere for your, your negative. So I'll set that all up. And, uh, and then all you do is shine your light down there and your timing mark, if you can see it, is right there. Let me zoom in. Right there is your timing mark. So you'll be able to see uh, the flash, the strobe, if you will. I'll try to catch it for you. Another thing you want to make sure is your vacuum line is not connected while you're doing your timing. So let's see. Yep, we're getting the flash here. So let's see where we're at. Okay, there we go. You should be able to see it there. There we go. I think the uh, camera lens is, uh, the camera shutter is messing with it. But that's where you'll check your timing. So anyway, I'm going to set that and uh, tighten up the distributor. So the timing is six degrees uh, before top dead center. There's two lines on mine for the uh, carbureted, just a plain uh, motor with no air conditioning or anything. So you just basically, one is the top dead center. And as you advance it, you'll hear the RPM come up. Uh, that's where you'll set your set your distributor. So I just uh, tighten up the one screw. Now I'll tighten up the other screw and the timing is set. And then all I got to do is plug my vacuum line back on. And there you go. All right, for the front, that's where I jack it up there, right in the middle of the cross member. Keeps the truck nice and level and you can just lift both sides with, with one jack quite easily. Let's pop these wheels off real quick. With the uh, front wheel off, you can inspect the brakes nice and easy. And as you can see, I've got lots of brake pad there. And let's check the inside here. That was great. There we go. Yeah, lots of brake pads. So yeah, we're the brakes are looking totally good. And you know, it's an opportunity just to basically check everything. Check your suspension. Make sure all your nuts are on tight and everything. So I'm going to go through both sides. I'm going to pull the other, other wheels off and give the suspension and everything a good going over and look for anything that uh, could be an issue. Okay, so looking over on the left side of the vehicle, I did find one issue and that was the tire was rubbing the fuel fill hose. So what I did is I actually just took the whole bracket and I mean, just give it a good push over. Probably got it over about a half of an inch, just kind of bent it over a bit. So hopefully that's enough clearance. I'll keep an eye on that. Um, but that was a good thing to find. And the other thing, which I don't think is an issue, is the front left axle uh, seal. Looks like it's leaking on the diff, but I think what it is, is when I was getting engine oil getting into my coolant, and when I flushed the whole system out, it was gushing oil all out here. It was just a right mess, and that goes right onto the differential, so I think that's what it is. It's, uh, it's actually just residual oil from when I was flushing out the oil from my coolant system. Speaking of coolant system, it's uh, it's kind of dirty. It's not oily. It's just uh, not really clean coolant. So I'm going to be flushing that out and uh, topping it up with some clean antifreeze. And I also checked on the rear, the CV axles, actually all the way around the CV axles. They're all good. No splits. Hoses all look good. Everything this everything looks really good. So one thing I'll be doing is checking the transmission oil level while I've got it up in the air. So looking under the vehicle here on the side of the transmission, the left side, right here is your fill um, plug. And that's where you check your level. Down here is your drain plug. So all you do with the truck level, it's important to be level, is undo that plug. And if oil starts to come out, you're full. If no oil comes out, then you've got to top it up. So I'm going to check that real quick. All right, so I did check that level right behind that cable. You can just see it, the, the bolt, and there was no oil came out. It's about a quarter inch low. With that said, I'm going to have to go get some oil, top this thing up. All right, so I've got some oil. It's, uh, I just use this AC Delco manual transmission fluid. The important thing is you need to make sure it's got GL4 in it because, uh, yeah, this is uh, 75, 85 weight, but the GL4 is going to be safe for brass internals like your, your synchros. And all I use to pump it in is uh, basically this is for pumping oil into an outboard motor. 
this little adapter for the leg, for the leg of a, a, a stern drive. But I just put that into the bottle and pump it in until the oil starts to come out. All right, so I got that topped up. It took uh, about three quarters of a liter it was down. So good thing I caught that. Uh, hopefully it didn't do any bearing damage. I don't think so, but good to have that topped up. So the next thing I'll do is I'll rotate the tires. Speaking of tires, you can see how poorly these have, uh, have worn. Um, I never did do an alignment on the front of this thing, which I, sh I should have done. The rears are actually, they're not too bad. They've worn pretty even. So it's good to rotate these. Uh, so word to the wise, if you're going to be putting new tires on your little sandbar, do an alignment. All right, I got the tires on, pumped them up with air because they were all a little bit low. And the next thing I'm going to do is adjust my fast, uh, cold idle. So under this cover here, there should be a cover here, mine's missing it, but under this cover is a screw to adjust your engine RPM, your idle RPM when the engine is cold. So mine is cold right now, so now's the time to do it. So there's two bolts to remove here and here, and uh, I'm gonna adjust the cold idle. Right down there, if I can get zoom in on it, right there, that screw is your fast idle. And I believe you turn it counterclockwise to go faster and clockwise to go slower. So I'm gonna start this thing up and we'll adjust the idle. There we go, that's about where I want it. So yeah, again, your cold idle is that one, and then your hot idle is that one right there, which I believe you can access through this little hole here is your idle screw. So there you go, that's idle. It was idling too high before, although the engine's already warmed up a bit, so it's, I might have to try it again when it's truly cold. All right, I got her all back together. I uh, hit this with a degreaser in there. It might be hard to tell, but it's definitely much cleaner than it was, so that's good. Um, so yeah, that's about all I think I need to do on this thing. One of the last things I like to do is put a piece of tape on the windshield with the mileage that I need to do my next oil change, which is 5,000 kilometers more than what I have now. Another thing I got done was actually mounting this skid plate. All the years I've had this truck done well, for a couple years anyway, I never did put the skid plate back on, so there you go, I got the skid plate mounted. So with that said, that's going to do it for this video. I've got the, all the maintenance done on that truck short of the coolant. I'll do that later on my own. It, that's just a matter of draining the radiator and topping up with some fresh coolant. Uh, but the little vehicle you see behind me in my Subaru Sandbar Rescue uh, Series, that's going to be carrying on next in my next video. Uh, I'm pulling the bed out here and uh, start getting that thing ready to install. So yeah, thoughts and comments down below. Think about subscribing. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and have yourself a great day.